Hi, I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. Thanks for choosing to watch this clip from our Small Town Big Deal YouTube channel. For full episodes, go to our website, smalltownbigdeal.com. Now, enjoy the video. Most of the early small towns in America were supplied by tall ships that brought goods across the Atlantic. Okay, so what do you mean exactly by a tall ship? Well, you know, like the kind that Christopher Columbus captains. Oh, you mean like Captain Hook and Blackbeard? More like the Mayflower and the USS Constitution. Like, like Jack Sparrow and the Blackbird. This is the SSV Oliver Hazard Perry, a very tall ship indeed. Rodney and I are meeting up with this majestic vessel as she sails up the Delaware River to join the Sail Philadelphia Festival. More about the festival in a bit. But first, welcome aboard. Thank you so much. We get to go aboard and experience this ship firsthand. Guys, let go. Let go, let go. You're fighting the sheets. Oh, did we mention this ship's main purpose is to train young people? Yep, they get a crash course in the skills needed to sail this huge craft. So when we have 18 professional crew on board, it's not really enough to sail the boat effectively. We rely on our trainees that come on board to actually be able to sail the boat. This is a big vessel and everything here is big and heavy, so we need many hands. She's big all right. Her center mast is over 13 stories tall. It's the largest civilian sailing school vessel in the U.S. and her construction was completed in 2015. The Oliver Hazard Perry is the first modern American square rig ship rig vessel. Ship rig means yards on all masts, three or more masts. And with all the huge masts, it's safe to assume the term tall ship has been around forever. But the phrase has only gradually come into use over the last century or so. John Maysfield wrote the poem, Sea Fever. And in that poem, he refrains periodically, all I want is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. Captain Miles has just reminded us through poetry of the romance many have with the sea and its great ships. But it is war, not romance, that helped give this ship her name. The Oliver Hazard Perry is named after the British naval hero who sailed against the British in the War of 1812. And while it looks like the ships of that period, it has modern radar and GPS gear, along with a couple of biodiesel engines, just in case the wind doesn't cooperate. But most of the training is geared to use the wind, not the engines. Even on a one-week trip with uh, high school age students, when the trainees leave the vessel, they'll be able to name every line on the boat, and we have over 200 lines. Seriously? Yes. We have seven miles of running rigging. Did Tucker just say seven miles? Now I understand why learning the ropes has a nautical origin. But in addition to learning about sailing, it's the voyage of self-discovery that is the biggest takeaway. There's a value, and that is people become mature in themselves when they are involved with the water, and they're particularly under sailboats. Uh, it's a growth for those people who have not been sort of outside themselves. On this particular voyage is a group of really committed trainees. They're midshipman candidates who will soon be on their way to the Naval Academy at Annapolis. I didn't really have that much money to go to college. Then I found out about the Naval Academy, and I know that I could become a doctor one day through the Naval Academy. So that's your long-term goal? Yes. Chloe's voyage didn't begin with smooth sailing. So at first when I was really seasick, I was like, I want to go home. I don't want to be on a ship. No way. No way. Because you were really sick, huh? I was really sick. I didn't want to get up. But after we went to Norfolk and we got to see all the really big battleships, it really affirmed my dream to join the Navy. One thing Chloe and her mates have to do right away is overcome any fear of heights. Yeah, they're a hundred feet up and they can't click into the safety harness until they get to the top. So to be clear, while sailing is fun, this ship is not for pleasure cruising. <laughs> nope, if you're gonna ride, you're gonna work. Ready sheets, ready halyards. Halyard, that's us, right? Well, I'm not sure. Hands to the halyard, I'm not positive. The hardest part, learning a second language. Talker. Where's Tucker? On your head soles, set the head soles. Haul away your halyards, cast off the down hauls, tend your sheets. So we have things like the fore topmast stay sole, the main top sole, the crow jack, sheets and halyards. We have down hauls and lifts. What? Man, this is hard. Here, ready? And heave, and heave, and heave. So as the sail got higher, it got heavier, and then it got really hard to pull. And oh. 
deep. All right, this is the part where we sweat it. Remember how we do that? Just like that, it's perfect. And then we're gonna sweat it and you're gonna pull the slack. Ready? In, out, down. All right, now we're gonna do what's called a locking turn. Twist, perfect, put it over the top of the pin and then pull tight. Perfect, look what you did. We set that sail closest to us, the four Thomas stay sail. You might think that the centuries old and complex skills it takes to sail a tall ship are in danger of drifting away. Well, not if this crew has anything to say about it. I mean, it's being part of a team and part of a community. You are sailing with the same 18 professional crew for a couple months at a time, so you really get to know everyone really well. And the best part of all is we get to go sailing all day every day. Thanks for watching this clip from Small Town Big Deal. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and be sure to click the bell so you'll be notified when we upload new videos. Also, click the like button. To see full episodes, go to www.smalltownbigdeal.com.